Don't try to hide all that snow. Get out and camp in it. bit of snow but uh, for the third part of this video on cold camping we're gonna talk about how it's like when it's really cold now in the other other two videos I told you how to set up your uh, your a-liner for the cold and uh, we also talked about boondocking but when it gets really really cold right now it is in the sun it's just under zero fahrenheit it's about uh minus 18 celsius but that could be the sun actually it feels a little colder than that but uh, we're going to talk about the practical way of being out uh, in your a-liner in the winter time and that's in an rv park where i'm at now i mean the advantages are just so phenomenal obviously you've got heat because you've got power so i don't have to run off propane in the background here you might hear a snow plow and that's the other bonus there's a lot of snow there's probably about a foot and a half two foot of snow here uh, in some places and it's plowed for you so i'm not worried about getting stuck i don't need the chains or anything like that uh, most RV places are near a major highway or road anyway, so that's a good thing. And the other bonus is I'm right next to uh, a ski resort. Having an outdoor activity like skiing, hiking, or just sightseeing sure helps beat those cold weather blues and boost your low vitamin D with a little sunlight. So you remember that polar vortex? That big nasty cold arctic front that came through and covered all of north america right up until florida lucky florida but the rest of the u.s and canada we suffered through that and that's partly why it took me a month to get out again but regardless it's actually still here but hell i wanted to get out and have some fun so here i am screw the polar vortex so what does zero fahrenheit or minus 18 celsius look like in a in an a-liner in the middle of winter Looks like this. I think it's time to warm it up a little bit. One real essential when it gets super cold out is that you have a source of power. And that's where an RV park comes in really good because they have hookups. And I've got the 30 amp hookup going right into the trailer. Uh, that's uh, hooking up the normal stuff like lights and computer and all that. But it's also running one space heater. Now I found out that I actually need two, but the, uh, the trailer uh, circuit will trip after 20 amps. So what I did is I put in a, the uh, 120 volt on an extension cord and it goes in and it runs the other heater. So it's nice and toasty in there, it doesn't matter how cold it is. One thing you really have to make sure of is that when it's really this cold, your engine's going to start. I have hooked up to my Jeep, I've got a block heater, keeps the, the whole engine warm. It's hooked up to extension cord to 110 power. Uh, the other options are a battery blanket, which uh, covers the battery, or if you have a trickle charger, you could hook that up as well. But when it's minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, minus 20, minus 25 uh, Celsius, there's a good chance your car is not going to start. And that's where an RV park comes in real handy because you've got a source of power. Yes, it's bear country, but it's January. They hibernate. No fear. Well, it doesn't matter what your uh, hobby is at the winter. As long as you got activity, enjoy it. Uh, whether it's skiing, snowshoeing, or cross country. I like snowshoeing.
mean, some people have a low tolerance for cold, but us northerners, we're kind of used to it. A couple hours in the uh, where it gets below freezing is not a big deal to me, but uh, when it's a like this, when it's a long spell where the high is in, you know, maybe five degrees Fahrenheit, then that's certainly called cold camping. So I hope you understand what I'm talking about. If water freezes, chances are it's pretty cold out. One of the problems with the A-liner in the winter time is condensation. Uh, so rather than using the stove indoors, I use uh, the, uh, the little uh, portable Coleman with propane. Uh, anytime I need to boil water, I just boil it on the outside. It boils pretty quick and uh, it's spaghetti night. Okay, well after all that insulation that we put in this uh, trailer, just wanted to show you how it worked when it's really cold. So there's a little bit of frost there and in here overall there's nothing dripping there's a little bit of frost as you go around uh, but the peak it's actually held there's no dripping there either uh, in between the middle there is a little bit of frost but other than that it was a good success. So the major changes between boondocking an RV inside is one, I have a toaster oven so I can cook these bagels. My water is in the inside instead of outside so it's keeping warm in the trailer because it's constantly being heated and that's by these two space heaters and you can hear them they're pretty noisy but uh, they keep the place really toasty. So to summarize, I love boondocking, but only when the weather is really good for it. The advantages of an RV park in extreme cold are just staggering. Now I'll, love, I'll give you my top 20 list. Number one, the roads are probably plowed in, uh, in the, uh, the park and on the way. Uh, sites well maintained, you get a good one. Uh, there's a social aspect. There's trailers all around. Uh, less risk. If there's an emergency, there's a, probably emergency service. There's a, a main building. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi. You've got uh, laundry. Uh, sewage disposal, which I don't need, but some will. Uh, there's lots of activities, like both in the park and, uh, you know, this one happens to be around a ski resort. Uh, easy access. Uh, usually are off, off a major highway which is plowed and all that so it's easy to get in and out. Uh, there's lots of supplies. There's usually you can get little munchies and canned goods and all that in, a, in an RV park. Um, information. You can get information about weather if you weren't in there uh, because there's an on-site person. Uh, the, the people that actually come are mostly weekenders skiing for the weekend so there's usually a lot of sites during the week and I'm here midweek so it's almost totally barren here. Uh, it's easy to find. Uh, anywhere there's ski resorts and all that there's probably an RV park. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than a chalet. Number 17, there's showers, hot showers, there's toilets and there's power. And the power is good for everything, keeping yourself hot, making sure the, the, temp, the, uh, the trailer is warm, plugging in your car, list goes on. Boondocking is great, um, but there's some times where it's just too risky. You know, wait for the spring, do some more boondocking, or in the fall, all summer, but super, super cold, January, February, uh, unless the other option is uh, go down south and do boondocking. Hey, that sounds like a great idea. There's nothing that beats a toasty warm fire in the middle of the winter time. Ah, it's so nice.
One thing you should plan for if you're uh, camping out in the winter time is uh, the nights are very long. So make sure you've got a good book, you got a computer, Wi-Fi, radio. The place I am right now is probably about 15 hours of darkness. So be comfortable and entertain yourself. Ah, this is great. Birds are chirping. Well, they're not now, of course. But uh, it's a nice morning. It's time to head out. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you look at my other two uh, videos uh, on cold camping. The boondocking one and uh, outfitting your trailer for the cold. Uh, it's been fun. I had a great time uh, snowshoeing. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you have any comments or notes, uh, drop me a line. Anyway, happy camping. Mm -hmm.